Hi, my name is Cliff Long. I'm an instructor in the Instrumentation Engineering Technology program here at Red Deer College. And today I'm reaching out to Math 31 students or calculus students to speak to them about a proportional plus integral plus derivative controller. All right, we're gonna be using a level process to demonstrate this controller. Right down here at the bottom, we have a, a pump that's gonna be drawing fluid out of this white tank. And out of this white tank, it's gonna flow up over to this control valve that's gonna open and close to control the level in the tank from this hose it flows into our tank where we're controlling level right here and then out of the tank it's going to flow back into where it came from in that white tank at the bottom and then just keep continuing around in a loop. In the vessel that we're controlling level in we have our little friend here Dan the duck he's going to be riding the level with us. Pretty cool Dan. To control this level we're going to need to be able to measure it so you can see a line coming over here down over to this blue device down here. This is our level transmitter. It's sensing the level in the tank and sensing how high Dan is in the tank. And remembering that our control valve is right up top here that opens and closes and allows more or less liquid to go into the tank. Both the level transmitter and the control valve connect back over to our control system here through these gray cables. Right here, we have our control system. This does our controller calculation. Right here, we have a screen so we can send values to our controller. The first term we need to become familiar with is error. And there's two ways to calculate error. Process variable minus set point and set point minus process variable. We call this either a direct or reverse acting controller. In our case, we're using a reverse acting controller because when the level or the process variable goes above the set point or where we want the level to be, we create this negative error. The negative error causes our valve to close. So when the level gets too high, we want the valve to close. When the level drops below the set point, we want the valve to open. So we're using a reverse acting controller for this process. All right, let's turn this process on and see it work. So I've turned on the pump. Open the drain valve on the bottom. You can see here our level is going up and down, up and down. If we look over here, our valve right over here is opening and closing, opening and closing. Problem with that is the valve's gonna wear out fast. The other problem is Dan up here, his stomach's gonna get sick. All right, so I wanted to draw your attention over here to our trend. You can see this teal line is the valve opening and closing, the signal going out to our control valve, so the controller output. The white line here is our set point. That's where we want our level to be. The, the yellow line here is our process variable, the level oscillating around the set point because the control valve is opening and closing. Proportional control allows us to prevent that on-off cycling. So if you look here, there's our error that we talked about before. What proportional control is, is the output or the controller output here signal is gonna be equal to the proportional gain times the error plus a biasing. So proportional meaning that the output here is gonna be proportional to the error. So if the error is positive or negative, it's gonna always change proportional to that error. When there is no error, or when the level equals the set point, when this value right here is zero, then the controller output equals the biasing. And so we wanna have some sort of a signal going out to our valve. Quite often this biasing is 50% to have the valve half open when we're at zero error. So let's go see what our biasing is set at for our controller when we set it up for proportional control. All right, so I've turned things back on again here. You can see that our process variable and our set point are almost identical. There is zero error. So that would be a zero error. And if you look at our biasing, uh, our controller output is equal to our biasing. It's sitting right around 65-ish, 65%. If I look down here, 64, right around 64% is what our controller output is sitting at. So that means our controller's bias is set for 65 or 64%. Now look over here, our level is steady. Flow in equals the flow out. Dan's happy. Control valve is about 65% open. It's not moving around, so we're not wearing it out. That's a happy duck. Now I'm gonna demonstrate the problem with proportional only control. I'm gonna go and make a disturbance. I'm gonna change the flow out of the tank here and we're gonna see what happens. All right, you can see that our disturbance caused our, control, our valve to start to close here to get the inflow to match the outflow. And you can see here now our process variable does not match the set point, but the level stopped moving. So Dan's happy over there, he's not moving anymore, but he's a little bit unhappy because he's not at 50%. He's at 55%, he wants to be down here at 50%. That is the problem with proportional only control. It has constant error here when we disturb it. It will not come back to the set point.
There's Dan, he's happy, but not really happy. All right, so what we're gonna do here to make Dan happy is we're gonna introduce integral to our controller. So we're gonna have a proportional plus integral controller. Right here is our integral term. We have this integral symbol right here. It's taking the area of the error versus the time here. So as time accumulates, we're gonna have more and more area totalizing. And that's what the definition of an integral is, is it's area under the curve. More and more area accumulating gets added onto our controller output, and it's gonna cause our valve to move constantly until this error here disappears. Once the error disappears, it's just gonna save the total accumulated area, and the controller output will just flatline at a new value. All right, so watch what happens when I turn on integral. So you can see over here, the controller output is starting to change here, and it's correcting for that constant error. It's gonna move the controller output until that error disappears here. So if you look here now, Dan's happy. Minimal error, it's pretty much all gone now. The last term that we have to talk about is derivative. So we have a proportional plus derivative calculation here. Here's the derivative right here. And what derivative does is it reacts to rate of change. You can think of this almost like slope, rise over run, but it's at a point, an instantaneous point on that graph there. So what this is gonna do, what derivative is gonna do is it's gonna speed up our controller. So if, there, if the error is changing slower, it's gonna respond, it's not gonna respond as much because this is gonna be a lower value. If the, if the rate of change is high, this is gonna be a higher value and it's gonna really increase our controller output. So it's gonna change the speed of response of our controller based on the rate of change of that error. All right, so now we're gonna demonstrate derivative here. We're first gonna compare it to a proportional only controller. So right now, I've got the controller set up for proportional only. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the valve on the bottom of this tank and let the level start draining. And we wanna see how the controller output signal, the signal out to the valve response. So we should see the level start to drop here, and you can see there, the controller output starts to climb proportionally. So it's climbed proportionally. I shut the valve, I just shut the valve to stop the level, and you can see it flatlined. And basically, the controller output is a mirror image almost of the, of the, uh, of the process variable or the error here that's being calculated. The only reason is because we have a higher gain setting. That's why there was more, more of, a, of a change up here. All right, so now we're gonna go and do the same thing, but we're gonna turn on derivative here. I'm gonna give the derivative time here. I'm gonna give it a time of, uh, let's go with eight seconds. There, I've got it set up with the derivative time of eight seconds. So nothing changed here, nothing changed. It's because we don't have any changing air. So we need to go and open that valve on the bottom of the vessel. We'll let it drain for a sec. And then we'll shut it. So one thing that happened that was different last time, we had a big jump at the beginning and then it kind of followed kind of followed this changing error, but then when the, the error stopped, it disappeared, a, a bit, it dropped right down. And what was happening right here was our derivative term was turning to zero. It was turning to zero and erasing all of the derivative part of our calculation and setting it back to where the proportional value would have it. So one thing to look here, we set this for eight seconds. So what it does is it tries to put, it tries to put the proportional value or what the proportional controller where it would have the controller output eight seconds ahead of time by looking at the rate of change of the air and then it just disappeared at the end i hope you enjoyed my demonstration of proportional integral and derivative in a controller i know dan sure did uh, just to recap on off control can wear out our valve or whatever we're controlling it could be a pump or a fan too and the problem with proportional though is it has offset or constant error. And the way we get rid of that constant error is we use integral. The other setting that we can use is derivative. Derivative is used for really slow processes to kind of give it that kick in the pants to get things going. We don't want to use derivative with a fast process, something that can change quite quickly because it'll cause the controller output basically to become on, off, or cycle again. If you enjoyed this and if you think that you'd like to learn more about this stuff, check out our instrumentation engineering technology program at Red Deer College. Have a great day.